So you all know this is the Taste of Success Scientific Research and Development um, session here today. So as Nancy has just put in the chat there, in case you entered the wrong Zoom room, feel free to exit, but you can also stay because you'll definitely learn something. Um, and students, Nancy just put in the chat, if you could share your year in school and your major with us, that would be great. Um, just so the presenters can see who we're talking with today. So awesome. Thank you, Sophia. And yeah, and the rest of the students, whenever you have a chance, feel free to put in, there we go, perfect. We've got an advisor crashing, a PhD candidate, this is awesome. We've got everybody today. First year, senior, I love it. All right, well, I think we should go and get started. And as we know, um, folks will trickle in as they do. They'll trickle out as they do. Um, that's how we kind of wanted to set this panel up as um, a low stakes thing. Students, please feel free to type any questions you have in the chat, or if you want to ask your question via audio, just use the raise your hand feature um, and we'll call on you. But first off, just welcome to the Scientific Research and Development um, Taste of Success. Um, I'm Kathleen, I work at SuccessWorks. We have a great uh, set of panelists today that are gonna share with you some sage words of wisdom and advice and all the things. So without further ado, I am going to kick it off to each of them to share with us their career path and their current role for about two to three minutes. And Chloe, we'll start with you if that sounds good. Sounds good. Hello, everyone. My name is Chloe. I am a third year PhD student at the University of Miami. I finished at UW-Madison spring 2019 with majors in molecular biology and legal studies. Um, I was pretty all over the place when I was trying to figure out my major. I probably talked to maybe 15 to 20 different academic advisors, so I really went everywhere. Um, and so really what I would love to talk to people about is if you have any questions about how to decide your major or what to do with a science degree in general. Um, also, if you're interested in anything science research related, because I am in graduate school now for biochemistry and molecular biology. Um, my long term plans after graduate school are something between industry and science policy. So looking at how science education is taught in K through 12 grade schools. Um, is there anything else I should mention right now? Is that perfect? All right, good. All right, Joe, do you want to take it away next? Sure, thank you. Uh, Joe Sable, I'm probably the only Im imposter in this group here, um, but um, I have a degree in chemistry from Carroll College, now Carroll University in Waukesha, and a PhD in chemistry from Oklahoma State University. I was a postdoc at University of Minnesota in chemical engineering. Uh, but later in my life, and I taught uh, analytical and physical chemistry, primarily undergraduate for about 15 years. But at some point in my life, I had to get some additional retraining and I took some courses in the geology department at UW-Madison Weeks Hall, electron microprobe analysis, and I taught chemistry at the time. Uh, in 1999, I started a consulting business and that's what I do now. Uh, primarily, I help typically small companies that can't uh, afford or justify a permanent staff member. And so I essentially do ad hoc research. Uh, I don't have a laboratory. It's all pretty much just uh, 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 documentary research, uh, library and things like that, but I provide recommendations and so forth. And I also do a lot of work with the American Chemical Society and a number of other organizations as far as organizing symposia at conferences. And uh, currently the topics that I'm interested in are decarbonization uh, of the chemical sector and things like that. 
So I'll be happy to answer any questions on uh, chemistry and science and, and uh, how we can address climate issues and, and so forth. And I think business, let me just point out that having a business course in your background is very valuable as well. So try to squeeze in something on tax accounting or general business and so forth in your career. Thank you, happy to be here. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, Viva, would you like to go next? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Viva Valentine. I am a group leader at PPD by Thermo Fisher, um, which essentially means I'm a laboratory supervisor. So what I do is I have a team of analysts that I oversee. Uh, we primarily focus on method development and validation, which means we create and draft analytical methods that test drug products and substances uh, for a variety of different chemical, um, you know, their chemical features, and then validate those methods, which just means that we can demonstrate that those methods are working as intended. Um, I got my undergraduate degree in chemistry and Spanish from UW-Madison and then continued on um, to get additional degrees in project management through a different UW college. And I'm currently enrolled in UC San Diego for um, programming of all things, interestingly enough. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and to talk with you all. So thank you so much. Thank you, Viva. Uh, Michelle, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Michelle. Um, I uh, am currently at uh, this company Amgen. It's a pharmaceutical company in Southern California. Um, I'm an R&D scientist here in early st stage drug development. Um, so my career, I started, I got my undergraduate degree at Luther College in chemistry. Um, I then went on to UW to get my PhD in chemistry, but with a focus on chemical biology. Um, I did a postdoc at Promega, which is a biotech company in the Madison, Wisconsin area. Um, and after that, I found a job here at Amgen. Um, and to give you a little bit more specifics about my role, um, I am in the ultra high throughput screening group. So what we are doing is we're testing um, hundreds of th thousands of compounds to try to get early drug leads. And so that is a really interesting position, merging um, biology, um, chemistry, robotics, automation, a little bit of programming. Um, and I'm happy to talk to people about it. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, Jennifer. Sorry, unmute problems. Hi, my name is Jenny Loeb. I work at Promega Corporation here in Madison, as Michelle just uh, mentioned. I work in the marketing group. I'm a global market segment manager focused on academic government. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and a master's in biotechnology from UW. I spent the first uh, 12 years of my career in research, basically R&D setting both at uh, UW as well as for um, industry, other life science tools companies, such as Thermo Fisher Scientific, as well as in uh, the world of pharmaceuticals. I work for Gilead. Um, I took a 10 year gap in between getting my bachelor's degree before returning to school to get my master's degree. And uh, the last nine years I've been marketing. So uh, switched over to the dark side on the business side. So thanks so much. Look forward to your questions. Uh, Kayla. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kayla Smith, and I am a research project coordinator at the Carbone Cancer Center here in Madison. I graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's degree in psychology and um, worked in direct patient care for a few years before transitioning into this role. And what I do is primarily um, gets research studies that are occurring on a global scale activated locally with our um, patients and physicians here in Madison. So I work with blood cancers, leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma. And there are a lot of rare disease studies that occur on a national level. And um, so we enroll patients that have those really rare diseases in those national studies so that they can have access to all those different things. So my job is kind of facilitating that at the university with the hospital resources as well as the university resources here. Thank you, Kayla. And Charlie, I believe you are our last one, if you'd mind just introducing yourself. Yeah, sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Charlie. 
Um, I graduated UW in May of 2020 with degrees in biochemistry and German. And I have since moved on since graduation and worked for a company called Merck. It's a global pharmaceutical company. Um, interestingly enough, my role is quite similar to Michelle's. I, uh, I work on an early discovery team here in chemical biology. Uh, and the way I like to think about that is studying how different chemicals um, affect interesting biologies um, and, and pathways, uh, and then sort of integrating that knowledge with automation uh, and robotics to be able to you know, not study one or two compounds at a time, but maybe thousands of them. I'm excited to answer your questions and to meet some of you. All right, students. Well, um, hopefully that was a good overview for you. And now's the time where you can ask questions for our alumni. Um, and it looks like we have our very first one. Awesome. Please keep those coming either in the chat or feel free to raise your hand. You can ask to particular people or the group as a whole. And this one appears to be for Michelle. Could you share what it was like, I assume, uh, as an industry postdoc, also as an R&D scientist, is your paycheck grant dependent or is it a set salary? Sure, yeah, I can answer that. So um, an industry postdoc depends <laughs> very dramatically depending on where you go. I think it is still um, something that's not as common. Um, one thing that was really appealing about Promega is um, I did get my own um, project. So um, it was something I could like take initiative and really push um, towards a publication. And I think I got two publications out of my time there. Um, extending the scope of the products that this company that Promega already does and makes. Um, and I think some of the things I worked on are going to eventually make it into the project pipeline. So that was really cool. Um, the salary was a little bit better than an academic postdoc, which was nice. Um, and it really um, it helped me get my next role pretty concretely because um, it was, I had publications to show and I also had industry experience and um, my yeah, Amgen really appreciated that. Um, and talking about my current role, I am a salaried employee um, and I don't think, at least in my R&D department, I don't know if there's any grant writing at all. Um, so um, I, I'm curious if other industry folks are funded by grants, but that's not something I've really seen um, so far. If anyone else, or if anyone does have any experience being grant funded and wants to chime in, feel free to raise your hand. Awesome. Joe? Yeah, I'll say that I have been on projects that have been contingent on grant funding. And currently, I'm an unpaid advisor to uh, a project spun out of Texas A&M University on uh, onboard vehicle hydrogen fuel cell devices. Uh, if the uh, a small business innovative research uh, grant is funded, then I might get some tangible compensation out of that. But uh, at the time, I'm an unfunded advisor to this particular project. So uh, align your prayer rugs that the National Science Foundation will uh, award this grant. So it, it does happen in, in, in my, my field, but generally I, I don't work unless people pay me. I've got more to do in my life. And, and I mean, I'll talk to anybody for a while on the phone, but after a while, if you don't have a problem and you don't have any resources to address the problem, then you don't really have a problem. Thank you, Joe. Um, students, more questions, feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat for any of our alumni, I'll give you a minute. Otherwise I do have some of my own questions as well. Da, da, da. I wish I had the lo-fi beats to play. All right, we have a question for everyone um, and not necessarily everyone. Feel free if this question speaks to you, maybe panel, just raise your hand and, and I'll call on you. But, what made you decide to pursue a career more focused on research? And anyone who would like to 
answer this one. I can go. All right, Chloe's going to kick us off. Yes, so I kind of had some soul searching during undergrad trying to figure out what I wanted to do after words and I actually didn't even think I was going to go to graduate school until my senior year. Uh, it kind of came down to for me that I found everything I planned my undergrad around classes, extracurriculars, etc. was all based around trying to be in a lab as much as possible, whatever undergraduate research experience I was doing at the time. And when I sat down with my academic advisor at the time, my senior year, they said, well, just do what you love after undergrad. And what I realized I loved was doing research. So that's why I stuck with it is because that's kind of what I kept trying to find myself doing in undergrad. Thank you, Chloe. Anyone else want to answer this one? Oh, Charlie, yes, please. I'd be willing to give my two cents, yeah. Um, hey, everyone. So um, I sort of have an uh, interesting route too. Um, I was also doing some soul searching during during college. I, I didn't know if after undergrad, I wanted to go right into the industry um, or continue my route down the, the academics. Um, and, and ultimately, um, I got fortunate enough to earn an, an, earn an internship in the industry um, with a more uh, local company to Madison uh, based out of like the Chicago area called AbbVie, uh, who I had met at a career fair. Um, and I think that really helped me get in the door and start seeing some of the differences between um, what an industry lab is like and what a uh, an academic lab is like. Um, and I, I sort of, um, and this is my two cents, um, I sort of liked um, the little bit more of this dynamic uh, collaborative environment that I thought the, the industry offered. Um, and that's not to say someday I won't go back um, for a master's or a PhD. Um, to that, to the earlier question as well, um, I know my company, uh, Merck, that is, um, has uh, people, postdocs that um, um, do their postdoc in industry, um, and they're treated um, like regular employees. Um, they also paid a salary. Um, and um, there's even some companies that have collaborations with institutions. Um, so I know some of the postdocs here, they also, they are doing research for the company, um, but also tied into an academic lab at um, like a local university. Um, and so um, depending on where you go, you could also look for um, and ask companies um, if they have any kind of collaborations with academic institutions. Thank you, Charlie. Joe, did you have something to add? Yeah, let me, um, I'm going to uh, just say something quickly about the uh, focus on your passions. If you're excited about something, you're going to want to get up in the morning and work on it. But if you're just chasing something because you're supposed to chase it or it's the hot field uh, and so forth, then you're, it's not going to be exciting uh, for you. And, and it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a chore, but you want something that really excites you. So follow your passions. And I've also found that in other volunteer work, for example, if you're not good at math, don't volunteer to be the treasurer of the group. But if you are good at math, well, then maybe that's something you should, you should uh, jump into because not everybody can do that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm going to defer to Jennifer on the question about how to connect science to business and come back uh, if there's any more. So Jennifer, to you. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So that's a great question. Um, for me, I was very fortunate in that when I worked in R&D for other companies prior to coming to Promega, um, I was launching products and it went to other researchers. It went into the research market. And so I worked very closely with others on the business side of things. So I was able to gain some exposure to what that was like and learn about kind of the skill sets that were required for people to take on uh, more of that business role. And over time, that's what actually um, pushed me to go back to school and get my master's degree. And I specifically chose the master's in biotech program at UW because it had this really nice balance between a science focus and building out and exposing me and other students to the business side and what that meant and kind of giving us those 
skills. And so I was able to utilize prior experience as well as the skills gained in my master's program to transition from the bench into the business side. So kind of like what Joe was saying, you know, if you have an interest in things like business, even as you're going through your undergrad or grad school career, um, start to take or audit some business classes and see if that resonates with you and really has an interest because that'll help you make that transition um, over time if that is the right fit. Let me let me add to that. Um, I don't know if my career was much different from Jennifer's on that, but uh, my opinion on auditing a course, uh, you don't really get much out of it unless you're really forced to do the homework. And if you're going to do that, you might as well just take the course for credit. But uh, that doesn't mean don't buy a book or get a book from the library and read it. Um, so if you want to uh, follow, uh, learn about business skills, you can get a lot of that community college. Um, uh, Madison Area Technical College, for example, you know, you don't need a Harvard MBA and so forth, but basic information about how contracts are structured. Everybody here, uh, students included, uh, at some point is going to negotiate a contract uh, in, the, in their life. And you should know uh, what the terms are uh, and, and how, to, how to get around things and so forth. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, you won't have any problems with that. So uh, certainly uh, self-study is going to help Auditing, sure, if that works for you, go ahead and do it. Uh, but again, there's plenty of information uh, out on the internet, in the libraries, uh, and talk to people um, uh, and, and learn, find a, find a mentor that you can uh, maybe not bug and so forth, but uh, certainly to ask questions. I, I've done that throughout my career to be a mentor to students at a variety of times. Awesome, thank you, Joe. Uh, any other questions, students, that you have for any of the panelists? If not, I have one that I always think is interesting. Um, what would you have wished you knew when you were a student? So at any point during your time as an undergrad, what do you wish you had known? Um, to, you can talk to your undergrad self here and anyone who wishes to answer this one, feel free to chime in. Jennifer? I'll, I'll jump in and say, um, if I had known then what I know now, I would have double majored in something like comp sci or something like that and kind of done what Viva's doing now and done some programming and had um, that skill set to to carry along with me. So that's something I think is even more important these days for STEM students um, and something I wish I had known and maybe put a little more thought into um, when I was an undergrad. Um, building off of that, I I really think that um, modern um, R and or at least what I see in R and D, it's a lot of informatics, um, big data processing. Like it's really going towards um, programming being a backbone of all sorts of scientific processes. And so um, I really am trying to brush up on those skills now. And I maybe I. 10 years ago, this wasn't as um, obvious to the R&D community, but it really is now. So if you can do some programming, that's really good. Can we get maybe one or two more that wants to share some wisdom with their undergrad self? Looks like uh, Chloe. Yeah, I think mine's a bit more general, but it's it's okay not to have everything sorted out in undergrad. I went from undergrad class to undergrad class, stressing out all the time, thinking I needed to figure out what my next 10, 20 year plan was. And I didn't really get that until I went to grad school and realized even in grad school, people don't have it figured out. Like I still don't know what I want to do with my life after this. Um, and just kind of do whatever you want to do, whatever excites you, kind of echoing what Joe said, um, follow your passions and it, you'll end up where you're supposed to be at the end of the day because you're following those passions. Um, apply to things that you don't think you're going to get because you never know what you're going to get. I applied to some internship my junior year in college uh, to Japan, not expecting to get it. And 
what do you know? I ended up getting it. Just weird things like that, that you don't know what's going to happen until you apply. And Joe, did you have something? Yeah, sure. Okay. So success is generally proportional to effort, but there's some, you know, uh, element of luck and serendipity involved in there. So, um, you know, talk to as many people as you can uh, in a variety of fields. But back to the uh, student, you know, I'm probably the dinosaur in this group here. Um, I was at the stage where uh, foreign languages were sort of going out the door. And if you took a computer science course, that would qualify as, as a foreign language requirement, which um, I still took a year of German in high school and college at Charlie. So that's a good point that you mentioned. Um, I didn't really put much effort into it. Um, but I think now, uh, if you go to Europe, anybody in Europe speaks three or four languages fluently. And back when I was a student, never been outside the country, you know, had, you know, no, I'm not, everybody's gonna speak English for the rest of my life and so forth. That's not the case. Um, I had opportunities where I could have worked in Switzerland and so forth, where they speak French, German, Italian, and so forth. And that didn't happen and so forth, but I'm sure that I could have gotten by with English. So uh, anybody, a student, uh, if, you're, if you don't know a foreign language, learn some of it, at least enough where you can travel around and order food and, and get basic directions. Uh, it, it's, I think would pay dividends down the road. You never know who you sit next to on an airplane or a train or bus or whatever it is, but foreign languages and now with the world affairs the way they are, um, reading and speaking foreign languages I think is very, very important. I wish I knew more. I can definitely echo that, Joe. That's one of my regrets. I wish I would have been put in like immersion kindergarten or something. Uh, tell that to my mom. But um, anyone else uh, have some advice for their undergrad self before we move on? So we do have a question here about how much work you do outside of the office. So it sounds like um, the question, are most of your responsibilities done at work or do you find yourself bringing work home with you? Um, so uh, maybe uh, Kayla, if you wanna kick us off. So I actually work from home, but I find that one of my favorite components of my current role is the really positive work life balance, even working with like providers who are on 24 seven, I find that um, I really enjoy the fact that my work can kind of um, stay at the office or stay at work and I can come back to it the next day and um, continue to learn and enjoy and um, participate in it without feeling like I constantly need to be like staying late or reviewing additional material. Um, so I appreciate that at least working in clinical research here. Awesome. Viva. Yeah, I think this is a great question to really investigate as you're looking into your first or any job. Um, I've worked in a number of pharmaceutical companies in the Madison and outside of the Madison area. Um, and the culture at each has, has varied very wildly. Um, there's definitely been places that I've worked or have interviewed at where the expectation is 60 hours a week, every single week up until uh, essentially, you know, Christmas, if, if you celebrate. Um, the company that I work for now, PPD, I love the culture here. Um, I work between 40 and 45 hours a week um, by choice. There's always the opportunity to work overtime if you are a non-salaried employee and you're looking for a little extra bump in your paycheck, but it's never been the expectation or mandatory. So that's really a cultural thing that you have to investigate at a company before you accept a job and go into that position knowing what you're gonna be walking into. Um, some people love the 60 hour work weeks. I do not. <laughs> so that was something that I, I definitely investigated while, while interviewing. Great advice, Viva. And Charlie, what about you? Hi, yeah, I, I really agree with that. And I think one of the things I, I did do when I was interviewing that I thought really helped was ask about the company's culture. Um, you know, different companies, have different ways of working, for example, or have um, different values that you know their corporations stand for. And um, um, I think that you'll find that company cultures do value do vary um, some quite drastic from others. Um, my personal experience um, is also quite similar, where the expectation is not that you have to work 
60 hours a week. Um, certainly, if you know you really wanted to, you certainly could work 60 hours a week, um, and maybe you you get something extra done and really impress someone, or you have an important presentation coming up, and so you want to. Uh, spend a few extra hours during the week working on that presentation. Um, I think um, the amount of uh, hours you work also is going to align with like what your goals are uh, at, at the at the company or you know what you want to accomplish in, in your career. Um, that's not to say you can't have a great career working 40 hours a week. Um, uh, but you know there might be some reasons why you might work longer one week versus um, not so long in other weeks. Um, I think another example I've come through is uh, a hiccup in, a, in an experiment gone wrong. Um, in in R and D, you'll find that you know certain things have specific timelines on them. Um, you know, uh, cells that uh, you know need to get something done with them by the end of the day, um, or need to be treated overnight. Um, and so maybe. Um, you want to stay an extra hour or two that day to to finish your experiment because there was a hiccup or something. Um, there's unpredictable things like that 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 can happen, and you. So I think that the work hours vary, but um, I would say, in general, I, I try not to work more than 45 uh, hours in a week. Thank you, Charlie. And the advisor in me does have to point uh, or just mention to students. I completely agree that this is a really good question to investigate and um, that, you know, you want to ask about the culture, or we'll just say definitely not your first question for folks in the interview, right? So don't don't ask the hours as your first question, maybe second interview, third interview, something like that. So um, all right, let's see here. So we did actually along the, the lines of hours, um, also question about salary and if you negotiated your salary and um, if you have any tips on that. And in general, I find, you know, most of us who've never negotiated a salary are kind of like, what do I do? So if anyone has any tips in general on that, it looks like Viva, you maybe have some experience here to share. Yeah, so I've negotiated my salary in every position that I've ever held. However, one thing that I would really, really suggest looking into, um, especially when you reach that point in the interview process where you're being offered a, a position, um, look at the look at the package as a whole, rather than just the dollar amount that you're going to be taking home. A really great example is I had been offered two positions, one that had paid several thousand dollars more a year. However, their insurance ended up being vastly more expensive. So I ended up I would end up having less take-home pay, even though my salary was greater. Um, for some of you, you might still be on parents' insurance or have other options, so that's great. But looking at the benefits package as a whole, including uh, additional benefits, I think is really beneficial when you're considering uh, your final take-home pay. So that would include things like health insurance, dental insurance, 401k, matching, um, as well as a variety of other benefits. Uh, there is PTO, vacation, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of negotiating, fresh out of college, typically speaking, most people don't. Um, and most companies, at least in the Madison area, in my experience, um, typically do not negotiate at that entry level position. Um, it's just what it, what it is. Um, so don't be surprised if you're going into an entry level, especially as uh, with an undergraduate degree, that a company won't entertain a negotiation. Anyone else have any um, thoughts on negotiating salary? Looks like Joe. So I think there's several um, students on the call here who are uh, involved in chemistry and, and you would look at, for example, the American Chemical Society does salary surveys every year. They're kind of broad geographical areas, but you get an idea of what the uh, average uh, uh, salary is. And again, it doesn't give all the benefits and so forth, but you get some kind of a ballpark of what it should be for various regions of the country. But I think you, you can find cost of living um, uh, uh, figures for a variety of areas. You know, the cost of living in downtown Chicago is gonna be different from living in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Uh, it could be the same job, for example. So you need to look at those things, do your research and find out and what would it take to sustain you uh, in that area. 
Uh, also, another thing, it's not really a part of the question, but make sure that your living arrangements are not uh, out of whack with your salary. So you're not paying too much for your uh, rent or mortgage or whatever the case may be. And for sure, make sure that if you have a commute, that it's not onerous. Um, San Francisco Bay Area, we have a few people that are familiar with that. Sure, you can live farther away from downtown San Francisco, but you've got a horrible commute and you've got another hour in your car or in the train that you're away from your home, your family uh, for more money. Uh, and sure, you can scroll on your phone as you're riding the train or listen to books on tape as you're driving your car, but it's not the same as being home. So don't forget to look at that as well too. But as far as negotiating, yes, I agree. Uh, uh, entry level jobs, probably not a lot of uh, latitude there. But as you go up the ladder, look at what your experience and your background would support and what would the market bear where you are going. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, and I also will just put a plug in for uh, for women or folks of marginalized identities. Uh, you may know that we tend to uh, negotiate less than basically white men. So think about that uh, too, as well, uh, when you are deciding if you wanna negotiate. And I personally also think, uh, depending on how you ask, right? As long as you ask in a decent way, you have some research to back it up, like Joe said, um, it's not gonna hurt you, right? Um, if, if you are conscientious about it. So um, after that kind of first job, I say go for it. Cause the worst they can say is no. And then as long as you did it nicely, you still have the offer, right? Um, okay, we have a question on additional education. Um, so you all might be able to see this in the chat um, and it looks like Viva. Or did you, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm super passionate about this topic. It's something okay. um, that I absolutely adore when people ask. Um, you can have a very successful career with just an undergrad de degree. I don't necessarily think you have to have an upper level degree to reach uh, your goals and what they want and what you want out of life, whatever that might be. Um, you make a really good point about having an employer pay for your education. And that kind of feeds back into my previous answer of looking at your benefits package as a whole. Many companies, at least in the Madison area that I'm familiar with, including PPD, offer tuition reimbursement. For example, PPD has been paying for my uh, continued education at UC San Diego. Um, so there's definitely a huge benefit in going into the industry, getting exposure, getting experience. And first of all, that will help determine, is this what you really want to do for the rest of your life? Um, or potentially do for a good chunk of your life. I've had a, a fair number of new hires come in um, and realize that research is just not what they want to do. They had gone through the schooling process. They had limited exposure, potentially due to COVID or other circumstances to the laboratory setting, and they got into their first job and, uh, whoa, this isn't where I want to go. Um, so you can save yourself a lot of potential investment or debt or time um, by going into industry and seeing what you wanna do. In addition, um, many companies will provide partial or full tuition reimbursement, and you could still be pulling a paycheck through that time and getting your education partially or, or fully paid for. Um, so there's there's a ton of benefits, um, but you know I wanna reiterate, you can have a very successful high reaching career with, with an undergraduate degree in, in many science fields. Um, if you look at job offerings, Many have uh, PhD or equivalent in years of experience. Um, so, you know, just bear that in mind if you're not quite ready for graduate school or you want to explore your interests, it's, it's a great way to go. Thank you, Viva. Kayla. Yes, I definitely agree with Viva and just kind of want to echo some similar sentiments. But um, the other thing I would say is, especially if you're kind of in that point in undergrad where you're not entirely sure what sort of path you want to follow with research, it's, um, I think, really accessible to explore a lot of different research opportunities with your bachelor's degree. And then um, kind of like Viva and others were saying, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to get some educational reimbursement depending on where you go. But I think, it's, I mean, so personally, I would say, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And so I'm really enjoying the research that I'm working in now. Um, but I'm also really grateful that when I graduated college, I didn't um, 
jump into a specific program because personally, I wasn't quite sure what I was most interested in at that time. And it's okay if you're not 100% sure. You've got time to figure a lot of it out. And so um, exploring a couple different things and taking advantage of the bachelor's degree that you just, you're working really hard to earn right now, um, I think is really valuable and can help you kind of guide yourself as far as pursuing um, more specific interests in higher education later, because you're gonna be spending more time and resources. And so, um, and a lot of the folks that are in those higher education programs speaking on this call talked about how much they enjoy what they're learning and how passionate they are about what they're studying. And so um, I know personally, I want to feel similarly about my research before continuing on in investing in school in that. Thanks, Kayla. Uh, Chloe. Yeah, coming from the academic perspective, I completely agree with everything the two other ladies just said. I think you need to go into higher education for the right reasons. And in my mind, the only right reason is if you're really passionate about your research. I have a few friends who I love dearly, um, but they came in wanting to do a PhD solely because they wanted to get more money after grad school. They thought this was the way to make more opportunities. And to be honest, they ended up uh, mastering out because they didn't have that love, the passion for their project. And that's what you need to get through the highs and lows of grad school at times. So if you don't know it's right for you, you don't need to feel like you're missing out or uh, putting a halt on your life while you go to industry. I think that's honestly the best thing to do is try to figure out what you want to do before you uh, lock yourself into some sort of grad school. Thank you, Chloe. Charlie. Hi there. Um, I. Um, first of all, I see the, the question specific to me, but I, for now, I'll just chime in on uh, and th this this question. Um, I think my two cents is also um, that if you're going to go to grad school, um, go because it, you're really passionate about the research area. Uh, don't go um, just to earn the three letters or because uh, you think you'll make more money. Um, afterwards. Um, I think the other thing related to that that I've learned um, in my career journey thus far is that career paths are not linear. Um, and I think that it's important to follow what you're interested in. And you don't have to have everything planned out. Sometimes just following what you're interested in will lead you down um, a pathway um, to something, to learning something new that you didn't, had no idea about um, or didn't know you enjoyed. Um, and I think sometimes just following those passions and seeing what like kind of falls into your lap um, is, is a good way of going about it. And, and since I've learned that, that's kind of how I've, I've taken, my, taken my career, um, even though it's pretty short thus far in the industry. Um, and like to, to continue on that, it's not like once you go into the industry, you can't go back. Um, and so... Um, there's definitely like a career, career paths are not linear. It, it's definitely is possible to like go back and forth. Michelle. Yeah, I had just one additional comment. Um, I 100% agree that um, a master's or a PhD is um, immensely easier if you're excited about research and that is your passion. Um, I will say one unfortunate thing about um, R&D in particular, um, a little, a lot of academia too is oftentimes you do need like a master's or a PhD to get to those higher levels. Um, that being said, um, I work with people that have bachelor's levels and are managers. Um, it often just, they, <laughs> they've been there 15, 20 years. So that is like something that is, that does go hand in hand with those advanced degrees. It does get you some um, level of, um, some sh proof that you um, potentially have the skills to better manage a project or lead a team. That's not always the case, but it, it is something employers do still consider. So um, keep that in mind. Yeah, so definitely a good, um, that, that's why you wanna ask this question to different people, right? Is there will be spaces where maybe the, a PhD is possibly required, right? So doing your homework on that is very important. 
Um, I do want to kick it over back to Charlie um, for the internship question. So how did you find an industry internship and any advice on that? And then actually we'll open up kind of the internship question to everybody because I think that's a great question. Hey, Savannah, I see you asked that question. Hey, yeah, um, there's actually a number of different things I, I think I took advantage of during my time at, at UW. Um, one is um, I actually used the, the SuccessWorks uh, Career Center um, and um, used them for advice like helping me find connections with alumni who had worked in the industry and whether that was making a connection on LinkedIn, uh, asking a question, um, just learning more about the industry. Um, having them review my resume, doing a mock interview, um, different things like that. Um, and then when it came time for a career fair, um, I researched the specific company. It was AbbVie at the time that I was interested in um, and taught myself a little bit about what they do. Um, this specific company also held um, a session at UW uh, before the career fair, which is kind of like a get to know them. Um, and I, um, I think one thing they that they liked is I came to the career fair and they had like sort of already recognized me from also having gone to like their specific, like get to know them type session. Um, and so um, I think it's definitely um, important to, you know, do a little bit of research and not just come in uh, to a career fair and showing them your resume, for example, but maybe like having a discussion with them about something that interests you or some like something that interests you about the company um, or why you think, you know, you might be a good fit for their company in, in a certain role. Um, does that help? I think there's like a, a few examples. Yes, thanks, Charlie. And uh, Jennifer. So shameless plug for me, I run a strategic initiative focused on educating and supporting early career scientists like yourselves. And um, we have a page within promega.com called the Student Resource Center. And on that page, we have a banner at the top for a white paper, which was written by two of my 2021 uh, summer interns about how to get an industry internship. So again, shameless plug, but recommend you check it out because it was written by one undergrad and one grad uh, student intern, both of which came from UW-Madison. But um, Charlie gave some great um, advice. Awesome, thanks Jennifer and Chloe. Yes, I just wanted to add, I had an or non-traditional internship. I used the international internship program uh, department on campus or, or at UW Madison to get an internship in Japan. They had a whole bunch in Europe, like a bunch in Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, um, but definitely check them out. They're really helpful. I was in contact with them for my freshman year. And at the time they didn't have that many biotech internships, but I just stayed in contact with them. And a couple of years later, they added a whole bunch. So there's a lot of options there. Awesome. We, I, I did paste a link to IIP in the chat if anyone's interested. Um, Nancy's also pasted or posted some of our links about internships. Does anyone else have thoughts on, and this is uh, a question I hear a lot, internships in terms of how do you find one if you don't have experience? So the how do I get experience if I don't have experience question. Charlie, yeah. Sorry, this is this is this is one I, I'm passionate I'm passionate about, um, and I, I think my answer to this question is any experience you have is experience. I I don't think there really is some uh, such thing as no experience. I I think the lens that I tried to see things through and that I I think can help you is learning how the experience you have fits into what the role you're applying for is, um, what transferable skills you've learned um, from whatever experience you do have, um, how can they apply to, um, how can they apply to the job you're applying to? And you all have experience, your students, you've taken classes, you've worked on projects, um, you know, you maybe you've 
done done schoolwork, and and I think that that is an important lens to to view it. Awesome, thanks, Charlie. Chloe. Um, adding to that, I also think it's really important just to show passion. Uh, when I applied to my first lab my freshman year, um, after I was accepted, the lab manager was very blunt with me, said there were a couple of sophomores who applied for this position that had experience, were way better qualified, but you came in and you'd shown that you'd read a couple of papers and actually asked us about our research. And that extra little step that I did by reading the papers and being willing to come and talk about it, even though I had no research experience whatsoever, was uh, ended up getting me the job. So I think passion is a big one too. That's great. That's great advice and passion and a little preparation, right? Uh, Michelle. Yeah, I wanted to build off that. Um, my first research experience, I, um, I had done no research at my undergrad and I applied for a summer internship at a plant research facility, facility like related to alternative energies and going along on that passion uh, comment I was really interested in this research and I just focused on that cover letter um, so I um, I took Charlie's advice too I was focusing on like my leadership skills um, things that I had done showing that I really when I care about something I put all my energy towards it um, I showed that I had read some papers and um, I ended up getting that internship. So you just never know. Um, it's worth worth giving a shot um, and yeah, doing your best. Joe. Sure, yeah, there's a, I think it's been said uh, and I'll echo that, that there's a variety of ways to get experience. And if you don't have direct experience in what the position requires, you got to be really careful. Is there something that's mandatory required for this position or is it just preferred? But setting that aside, uh, you can get experience by being on a project uh, and being associated with it. And as a quick example, a couple of years ago, um, I was asked to help uh, draft a proposal for the hydrogen uh, project with the Department of Energy, not the current one that I'm involved on. But um, because I did that, uh, and I didn't have any experience doing that, uh, but I was essentially assisting others with that. After that was all said and done, I could legitimately say that I had experience in preparing a proposal for the Department of Energy involved in you know, hydrogen use. So there you go. So uh, by association, you can get experience. Awesome, thank you, Joe. So we are, um probably uh, coming down to maybe one uh, our last question here. So if anyone wants to get a last question in, I did see a question from Savannah about unpaid internships where, you know, it, that's, uh, that's not feasible for someone. Is it feasible to get paid internships? And I do want to point to the link Nancy put in there um, with the free money. Uh, that is actually a link to a fund that we have at SuccessWorks that gives you money for uh, either underpaid or unpaid internships. So if if you are interested in that, please apply to that. But I will kick it to um, the team too. So Viva, if you have thoughts on this. Yeah, uh, so that's a great question. Um, and I understand free internships are, are not viable for everyone. They certainly weren't for me and my undergraduate. Many companies in the area do offer paid internships. PPD's internships are, for example, all paid. Um, the other thing to consider too is I did not take an internship uh, during my undergraduate experience because I was in a very similar position. I was working full-time and I, I just didn't have the latitude to add um, additional work on top of a paid position as well as school. Um, you know, it's not going to be the end all be all. If you don't get an internship in your undergrad, it's certainly not going to mean you're not going to, you're not going to find a job, uh, especially if you're in the Madison area. It's an extremely competitive market for employers right now. Um, so there are a lot of jobs and not many fresh graduates. So it's not the end of the world if you, if you decide or it's unfeasible to get an internship. Is it a benefit? Will it, will it add value to your education? Will it add value to your resume when you're, when you're looking for those um, entry-level positions of post-graduation? Absolutely. I don't discount the opportunity if you're, if you're able to afford to do so, um, but don't let it weigh on you either if it, if it doesn't come to fruition. Ms. Viva and Chloe. 
Yeah, so in my experience, I thought most company internships are paid. There might be some exceptions, but if you're looking at academic internships, you're probably not going to get paid. Um, I did one my freshman to sophomore year summer, and there are some scholarships you can apply to, specific like UW-Madison scholarships. The one I applied to is the Welton, I think it's the Welton Summer Fellowship. Um, there's a few other ones too, and again, just talk to your academic advisors to see what's out there, what stage in your undergrad you're in, and what you could apply to to get some internship money. Yes, definitely agree that there there are some resources out there. Uh, we as a career office are definitely trying to get rid of the unpaid internship, so we're here to help you all. Um, so we have time for one last question, if anyone has one. Otherwise, I think we will just say thank you to all of our panelists here today. Um, I think you all have shared some great information with students and it's going to be really helpful. Um, and students, please feel free to grab the links from the chat. Uh, people shared a lot of good information in there. So uh, yeah, so students, if you wanna just join me in thanking our panelists and we will see you next time. <laughs>